Shut up and sit down. Hello, newcomers and old timers. I am Cool Scratches. Currently, I'm working on the next set of pictures for the Venom 2 abstract. But it's taking longer than I expected, so I won't be able to finish the next part this week, even if I was hoping to. And in turn, this means the next page of Orphan will have to be pushed back as well. That sucks, but I'm still figuring all this out. Seven years on, and I'm still figuring all this out. I may just not be very good at it. But as a very old meme said, Improvise, adapt, overcome. So here's hoping this bit of speed painting will assuage your ravenous consumer moss. Eat it! Eat it all! I thought I'd talk a bit about the abstract, which I've now decided to call Carnage Incarnate. At first I called it Maximum Carnage as a comics reference, and when the official sequel title was released I briefly called it Letter B Carnage, because I was hoping to capitalize on the news. But then I decided to have a bit of pride and came up with my own title, thus Carnage Incarnate. Now I liked Venom, but as a critic I see the many flaws with it. It's kind of a miracle it works as well as it does, that it manages to hit that sweet spot where you stop caring about it being dumb and you just enjoy the ride. Especially given Sony's track record with comic book movies. With that said, I have a lot of hopes for the coming sequel, but I don't have a lot of confidence in it. That's what inspired me to start this project, to explore what I would want to see in a Venom sequel. And what I would want to see is King of the Monsters. Cards on the table, I am not a massive Godzilla fan. I've only ever seen four movies, the 98 American films, the new legendary films, and Shin Godzilla. But through Decker and Creepy's review series, I know a bit about the franchise. Enough to know there's a lot to it, and enough to know I'm not particularly interested in tracking down any more movies. But I thought King of the Monsters was a blast. It took all these classic elements of kaiju films, adapted them without disrespecting them, and presented everything you would want to see in a kaiju film. The classic monsters, the titanic brawls, the contemporary themes, the people affected by it, all packaged together tight in one two-hour thrill ride. It wasn't a perfect film, but it was enjoyable from beginning to end. That's what I want the Venom sequel to be. The Marvel Cinematic Universe gradually worked their way up to ever more epic scenarios and plotlines. But Legendary poured pretty much everything you would want to see from a western kaiju franchise into one epic detonation of awesomeness. It didn't build up King Ghidorah over several sequels, it didn't make us wait for a standalone Mothra movie, it didn't bother paving a sensible road to the final climactic showdown. It just delivered on everything all at the same time. Put it like that, it actually sounds kind of boring. Senseless spectacle with no dramatic ground to stand on isn't all that interesting. But the thing is, before I saw King of the Monsters, I saw Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island. And while they were okay, they didn't tickle me the way the King of the Monsters did. Sony doesn't have a good track record with these sorts of things. King of the Monsters had Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, Rodan, and an upsy of other kaijus, not to mention what felt like a dozen human characters, all with their own motivations and desires. Compare that to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which also had an upsy of characters and plotlines, but nowhere near as many, and it still ended up feeling like a mess. In Venom 2, we can expect to see Venom, Eddie Brock, Carnage, Cletus Cassidy, Shriek, and Weighing, and the actors have hinted at Spider-Man making an appearance, and it's possible we'll get to see even more characters, and I'm just worried it'll be The Amazing Spider-Man 2 all over again. So I say, go insane. Give us one movie that has everything we would want to see from these characters all at once, and then you can move on and make the same mediocre sequels you're famous for. And that's pretty much my end goal with this project, to make a slightly preposterous monster brawl extravaganza. Will that be better than the actual film? I have no idea. The film isn't released yet and any judgement I make about it is speculation at best. All I can do is hope I make something awesome and I hope you'll enjoy it as well. I thought I would talk a little bit about music as well. In the awful 
teaser Sony recently released. We didn't get a lot in terms of music. It was mostly suspenseful sounds trying to evoke a feeling of incoming catastrophe. So unless the composers are making agrotech, it's still a mystery what the movie will sound like. But if they are, I very much approve. The soundtrack for Venom was composed by a compatriot of mine, Ludwig Göransson, who also composed the soundtrack for Black Panther and the Creed movies. In addition to that, the film featured the songs No Problem by Pusha T, The Royal We by Run the Jewels, and of course, Venom by Eminem. I can only hope Göransson returns to score the sequel, because he did a great job, I think. But those three singles have me thinking. If someone were to give Carnage a theme song, what kind of song should it be? The first film had a very strong leaning towards hip-hop and rap, which I think suited Venom just fine. But if Venom is rap and hip-hop, then Carnage has to be metal. I don't know, but to me hip-hop and rap tends to celebrate the underdog rising above the hell they're born into, while metal music tends to be more about causing it. At least the kind of metal that I listen to, because I'm a badass. But I gave it some thought and came up with four songs that I think would fit well enough as Carnage theme. And you may wonder, why four? Because I'm not restricted by the formulaic top five lists. Starting off my top four picks for a Carnage theme song, Augenauf by Oomph. Not my first choice by far, but it's got this dark, threatening atmosphere and that I think would gel well with the super-powered serial killer. The rhythm is a bit too creeping death, I think, for a, megalomanic, for a megalomanic beast like Carnage, who I don't think knows what subtlety is. But the song is about a creepy game of hide-and-seek, and when the refrain kicks in, all hell breaks loose in a way that I think would work very well in a trailer. My third pick is Conquer All by Behemoth. Aggressive, loud, and to the point. All life is inherently inferior to the sovereign entity roaring the lyrics, a scathing war cry announcing the start of a Contramundum-style conflict, where all that is will bow down in servitude or sustenance. Suits Carnage well, as he's scary, but not exactly profound. He's blunt and very simple, and very easily outsmarted to someone who knows how to jingle a keychain in front of his eyes. That doesn't change the fact that when he decides to do something, there are very few things that could reliably stop him, and why him getting loose tend to be equal to a natural disaster. Second pick is an outlier that I take much hipster pride in saying, yeah, I don't think you've heard of them, but they're like my favorite band ever. Too Evil for Hell by Sarcophagic. Industrial death metal of epic proportions. This song feels like stepping into a deeply deranged mind that switches between self-aggrandizing and batshit insane at the top of a refrain. Starting with pounding bass drums and cutting riffs as a German chant decries God, humanity and virtue, it starts building towards an epic revelation, divine before delving into the frantic, chaotic mind of someone truly lost to reality. Like he's broken through the veil and reached a place where their sanity can thrive and hunt for flesh and blood. The thing is, while the song would reflect Cassidy's insanity, I think it's too epic for him. As I said, he's really simple, and despite his absurd amount of power, I wouldn't say he's actually godlike. If anything, if Sony actually manages to keep this franchise going, I'd say this song is more suited for Null. Overpowered, divine, and hostile to all life, the god of the symbiotes deserve a theme to reflect it. And my number one pick for a Venom 2 theme song is... Super Beast by Rob Zombie. Kind of underwhelming given the direction this was going, but hear me out. While I would like to hear any of these songs in relation to Venom 2, the fact is Sony's producers are guided by the mighty hand of bean counters and target demographics and they're looking for as big a spread as possible. That means while I'm hoping it'll be suitably dark, Venom 2 will most likely be guided by mass appeal rather than artistic integrity or respect for the source material. I mean hell, the reason Venom was rambunctious and funny rather than dark and monstrous was because the MCU showed audiences respond to that. Point is, I doubt whatever theme Carnage is given will come from any niche artist. It'll be a track made by one of the biggest musicians in the world. 
With that in mind, I think Super Beast balances that fine line between appropriate and recognizable perfectly. Carnage is a beast, and he's super powered, so there. Plus it's a fucking awesome song. Still, these are just my thoughts on the matter. I don't know what song will come, or how the movie will turn out, but I'll keep working on the abstract, and there should be a new update next week, but don't take my word for it. There was supposed to be an update this week, and this one picture took three days to make. No matter what, I'm happy to be working on this project, and I hope you'll stick around to see where it goes. What even is this thing? Is it human? What, what the fuck am I doing with my life?